as super scientists, we're looking at 3.1 water supply, and we're going to be looking at how water can be conserved and different sources of water and what their uses are. So what are some different ways that you might use water? So think about some of the different ways that you personally use water. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ones, so you're not going to write down all of them. Just pick a few. So household purposes, washing dishes, washing clothes, cleaning, cooking, baking. Those are some of the ways that you might use water. Recreation. So using water for fun. Got a picture of somebody that's tubing or maybe water skiing, things like that slip and slides, water balloons, transportation. So no matter what kind of vehicle you use, whether it's car, bus, airplane, trains, that kind of thing, they're all going to use water in some way, whether it's for a coolant or as a cleaner, like you might have in windshield wiper cleaners. Industries are going to use water in a variety of ways. A lot of times they will use water for cooling down machinery. Agriculture, so we know your STEM agri means farming. So agriculture is going to use water, of course, for the crops and for providing what they need for photosynthesis. So when you have a water shortage, that means there's too little precipitation or there's been too great a demand place that is on the supply on the particular water supply that you have. And that kind of ties back in with the um, aquifer and groundwater picture that we looked at where you could see the dry well versus the well that was currently active. So if it's a dry well, that may mean that there's been a drought and you have a water shortage. Conserving water. So there are a lot of different ways that you can conserve water. The three R's are reduce, reuse, and recycle. So by reducing your water usage, you're going to reduce the amount of water that you consume on a daily basis. So it's always good to kind of examine that and reflect on how you can conserve water. Because remember, only 3% of Earth's water is fresh water, but way less than that is what is available for the entire population of the Earth to use, not only humans, but also animals and plants alike. Recycling water. So um, by using water in um, ways that will conserve it, such as um, Auto Bell, for example. Well, they, they will wash cars, but then that water is then uh, filtered and will continually be used to wash cars because you're just washing cars. So it doesn't matter if the water is dirty or not. Nobody's going to be drinking it. And then reusing water. So use water for one activity and then maybe for something else. For example, in this picture, you see a scrub basin. So they're washing off vegetables in a bowl. So that's going to prevent the water from continually running as they're rinsing vegetables. But then that water can then be uh, poured on a plant. So it can be used outside and um, will allow for another purpose, whereas you might not um, need to run a hose, for example, to water your plants because you have just used this water, which wasn't all that dirty from just rinsing off vegetables. So there's a lot of different ways that you personally can conserve water. Take shorter showers, only fill bathtubs halfway full, um, watering the lawn. So this is one that a lot of people don't think of, water the lawn either in early morning or late in the afternoon. And that way, you're not watering in the middle of the day where the sun is going to evaporate and not even get to soak into the soil. Um, running your laundry and dishwasher when you have a full load only. So if you're just throwing in your favorite pair of jeans, then that's going to be very wasteful of the water. So conservation is using less of a resource so that it's not going to be used up. That's being cognizant of the amount that you use, whether it's water or energy, for example, another one. So making sure that you are being responsible with your actions and also doing what you can to conserve water on your part. So since we don't have a lot of fresh water on Earth and a lot of fresh water available for drinking, there are several different ways that scientists have been experimenting with. So one of them is desalination. So your stem D is remove. And then saline, we all know, refers to salt. So that it's literally the act of removing salt from the water. So this is a desalination uh, apparatus, and we've talked about this a little bit before. So boiling water until it evaporates, the salt gets left behind, and the water vapor will be condensed. It'll be cooled down back into a liquid so that as that water vapor is going through the condenser, it's cooled down and collected, and then that water can be used. 
but that's going to be really expensive process when you take it large scale in order to provide fresh water for a large population. Freezing, so when you freeze salt water, um, the salt does not freeze, just the water is going to be frozen. Filtering, so filtering out the salt from salt water. Icebergs, I think this is a really interesting one. This is something that's being experimented with and there's a lot of variables and a lot of things that uh, come into play with this. So here's a picture of an iceberg. So you can see that with this iceberg, which um, is fresh water, a lot of it's going to be stored down below the surface. So this iceberg is in salt water, it's in an ocean. So taking an iceberg, dragging an iceberg to a warmer area. So if you drag the iceberg to somewhere where it's warmer, it's going to melt. And in that case, well, that water is going to go somewhere. So one of the things that uh, is problematic with it is trying to capture that fresh water and not letting it just mix in with the salt water that's around it. And then irrigation. So irrig irrigation is a process of supplying water to areas of land to make them suitable for growing crops. So in the United States, more water is used for irrigation than for any other purpose. So if you have a question in your EOG that asks you about water usage in the United States, irrigation is what most of the water consumption in the United States is for. And that's pretty important because we grow a lot of crops. We provide food. Food is necessary for um, providing what you need for um, glucose and cellular respiration. And this is a picture of irrigation. You may have seen this before. It looks basically like sprinklers. And sometimes there are really large um, apparatus that um, kind of are up above the ground and then have these little sprinklers that um, dangle below it, basically. So it may not be sprinklers that are going upward, but it may be sprinklers that are going downward as well.